My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. And in today's video, we're doing a review on this HyperTuff uh, garage light. I uh, found this at Walmart uh, when I was there the other day. Pretty good price on it, and uh, we'll see if it's a good product. I've uh, reviewed other HyperTuff products, uh, the socket, uh, ultimate socket test I did. Um, so I was curious to see how well this did. Uh, for the for the price, I couldn't pass it. You know, I, I've got a lot of these lights in the garage here. Um, I helped uh, Tanner with Toyota Fixation put some lights in his garage, and uh, the lights I've got in here. I've got the Hypercon lights in in this garage, as well as the Sunco lights in the Toyota Fixation garage. So uh, let's uh, dig into these. Let's compare with what uh, my other experiences have been, and see if it's a good light for the price. So before we crack into this, let's uh, take a look at what the box says. On the box, we got HyperTuff 5000 lumen. Uh, 5000 lumen is a fair amount of output. Lumen is the uh, um, brightness of the lights. That's got a 40 years of life. Easy plug-in. So I do like the plug-in fixtures, depending on your application. But for a lot of people, plug-in's probably the way to go because they don't want to deal with wiring and putting wire nuts and dealing with live power. So if, if you have an outlet nearby, and uh, plug-in is definitely a good way to go. And then we got a five-year limited warranty. We've got a pole chain switch. So uh, these Hypercon lights that I've got, they've got an inline switch, so you have to be able to reach the, the cabling. Uh, whereas this one, it's obviously intended to be hung from the ceiling, and then you can reach up and grab the cable and give it a tug. We've got uh, daylight non-dimmable, 50 actual watts used, and 250 watt equivalent. 5,000 lumens, estimated cost per year, $6. And uh, I thought this was kind of funny. Built-in LEDs, never change a bulb. Well, um, unfortunately with these fixtures, if they go out, you definitely don't have to change the bulb, you have to change out the whole fixture. So a uh, little bit of uh, marketing magic there. I thought that was humorous. Uh, if you haven't seen my other videos, I have a kitchen light video. Uh, that had some issues um, with the LED driver going out. So that is one thing I've had problems with LEDs is the uh, the lifespan, the LEDs are fine, but it's a lot of the other components that uh, usually go bad. So uses for this product, we got garages, recreational areas, workbenches, attics and basements, utility rooms, sheds. What's included, we've got one four foot LED shop light, two, 22 inch hanging chains with S hooks, two screws, two plastic wall anchors, two zip ties, and then the color temperature is also 5000K. So color temperature 5000K is gonna be a more of a bluish tone, not super blue, uh, but certainly not uh, the daylight yellow. Um, so I, I prefer 5000K, that's what most of my fixtures are. I think that's all the specs. We don't even need a knife for this one. So uh, one of my biggest complaints with these lights is the innovation. There's no innovation. Why is this four foot? Well, it's four foot because that's what we expect as consumers. We want shop lights to look like the old, uh, what are they called, fluorescent, fluorescent bulbs, fluorescent fixtures. Why not five foot? Why not three foot? Why four, four foot? That's what was there before. Got a little installation manual. We got uh, all of the LEDs are exposed. So um, some of these fixtures, they have little cover plates, diffusers, different things like that. Some of them, a lot of them actually look like uh, your traditional fluorescent light bulbs uh, with the tubes and, and they really want to replicate that again, that look. Uh, we just bought a fixture upper house, had popcorn ceilings and it was post uh, oh, asbestos. So the original popcorn ceilings had asbestos. So uh, asbestos had a little bit of sparkle to it. So when they did our popcorn ceilings, they put a little bit of sparkle to it, trying to replicate the asbestos. Again, uh, no innovation here. So, so uh, it's a, a lifelong problem. Um, we do kind of have a little cylindrical um, plastic piece that probably when this lights up does look a little bit like uh, your traditional fluorescence. So 
we have our pull cord, about a foot long. Looks like it's uh, recessed in there. And then I don't know if I saw how long the extension cord was, but it looks like it's four or five feet, maybe six feet max. Um, pretty good length. Outlet right here. Okay, pull cord. Boom. Let there be light. Woo! So you can definitely see, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Yeah, it's hard to see on camera. In person, you can see the little LED bulbs, but on camera, not so much. Um, pretty bright light. I really like this. Let me turn this off so I'm not being blinded. So, what do I like? My Hypercon lights, perfect. Perfect for uh, filming the studio, light everything up, get good light on the camera. I don't have any fancy camera lights or anything like that. But one of the huge disadvantages, my last garage and a rental, um, these are not instant on lights. When I took, turned on the light switch, they turned on. And because they're not instant on, it, it literally took you know a good second or two or maybe even three before they would actually kick on. So you'd walk out in the garage, flip the light on, continue walking into darkness, and you'd be a step or two into the garage in darkness still. Um, so with these, they do seem to be more of an instant on. Um, certainly a lot quicker than the Hypercons. Uh, good feature to have. Um, if you plan on using them on a switch uh, fixture like that, like I had in that situation. Now in my garage, I've got the old fixtures, which are close to the light switch. I turn them on. The light turns on, the fluorescent does, and then my uh, thrifty garage lights come on for the filming studio, and it uh, doesn't matter because I'm not in that space of the garage at the time for that. So instant on, very important. Um, the plug-in feature, one thing it doesn't have is um, the Sunco lights uh, that we put in Tanner's garage had a plug on the other end, so they were what you call linkable. So you have an outlet on one side, comes into the fixture and then you'd have an outlet on the end of it that you could plug the next light onto and you could string, I think, four together. Really nice feature if you plan on stringing them together. So with these, you only have an outlet per light. So you have to have more outlets for the situation. It is also a, it's also a three prong plug, which I believe the Suncos were as well. Uh, these Hypercons are just a two prong plug. So the Hypercons were perfect uh, with my Christmas lights, I can use the Christmas light cord to make custom length fittings and wire it up. And uh, they are switched on the cord, so the, the switch is in the cord. So they, um, I just turn them on all the time though. I've got them zip tied to the ceiling, really nice, neat and clean, and kind of concealed. And then they are actually controlled with the light switch that goes to an outlet. So with these, if you have a garage ceiling, place where you can plug them in, have them up high, uh, you will be limited on your height, because obviously you want this pull cord to be close enough to the ground that you can pull on it. So probably an eight foot ceiling would be a good height. Uh, you go nine or 10, it might be a little bit out of reach. So depending on your garage height, uh, will depend on, on how these work, or, or your laundry room, utility room, whatever you decide to put this in. Um, but you can buy chain extenders for these. So that is something you can do as well. Um, the light outputs, I, I think it's very comparable to these. Again, uh, 5,000 lumens, uh, pretty good output. Um, in a garage, good size garage, you're going to want to have four of these. Um, maybe a small garage, a one car garage, you can get away with two. Uh, but I like to have a lot of lights. Uh, I've got four lights just in this, you know, 10 by 10 or 10 by 15 area. What else we got? We got this uh, little install kit. So I, I guess I prefer a flush mount which this is not a flush mount kit. So I always enjoy when I can flush mount it to the ceiling and have it really tight and secure against the ceiling. Um, but these are the chains. So I guess with your, your pull cord distance, you can control that with these chain heights. So you can hook up these chains. So if you do happen to have a taller ceiling, say 10 foot ceiling, these are going to get you an extra, say, two feet off the ground, and then bring your, your pull string within reach. Um, it also comes with two little hooks. 
Just, uh, you know, something you could drill a little quick self-tapping or drill a little hole in there, screw it in, or it has these uh, drywall anchors. So pretty much has everything you'd need, as well as a singular, you know, two, two zip ties, which you could use to uh, to pull up and secure your cord. So the, the real unveil, the price. So I think most light fixtures I pick up, they're about 20 bucks a fixture. Maybe you can find them as cheap as 10 if you buy a, a, a multi-pack. But these from Walmart, these hyper tough lights, these were $12 a piece. So uh, for $25 here, we've got two, two garage lights. Pretty good deal, if you ask me. Um, I'm definitely excited to find use for these. Uh, again, in a new space, uh, needing more lighting. So uh, you can, I swear you can never have enough lighting. So anyways, we'll uh, leave you off there. Uh, thanks for watching this Ripty Garage video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.